Hello everybody, Arctic here, and welcome, welcome one and all to the 100th fact video. Well, 100th video in this playlist. Actually, I think it's 101, I think I may have miscounted. Does it really matter? We're going to celebrate this anyways, because I, I don't think we can count the first one. It's 26 facts, what the heck? Actually, the first couple were like 26, 16, 16. Ugh. I hate those videos anyways, their quality is so terrible. I'd like to think that we've gotten better. But anyways, anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Pong. This is 10 facts about Pong. Pong was initially released in 1972 in the U.S. and then got a worldwide release in 1973. Here we go. Number one, Pong was created as a training exercise by Alan Alcorn. Love the name. That is just a beautiful name. Stan Lee would be proud. Um, it was assigned to him by one of Atari's co-founders, Nolan Bushnell. Um, you'll, we'll talk more about him, too. It was based on the electronic ping-pong game created for the Magnavox Odyssey. Unfortunately, this led to a lawsuit that got settled out of court with Atari as a licensee. L long, strange story. Anyways, number two. Dabney wanted the game to boo and hiss when players lost rounds, won stuff, etc. And... Um, but given the fact Alcorn had limited space available, he wasn't sure exactly how to do this. Um, he ended up uh, inspecting a sync generator that would generate the sounds for him, and so he was able to use those to create the tones and put them into the game. Number three. Uh, there's a cool little feature about the game with the fact that the paddles could not reach the top of the screen. Um, this was actually because of a circuit that had a defect but it was decided to be left in as a permanent fit, a permanent thing instead of a defect, ends up calling it a defect, even though it was, because it made the game more difficult and helped limit playtime, so that, um, because otherwise he felt that um, if you got two really skilled players, they could play forever. This actually left an out. Number four, the prototype. The prototype for this. By the way, I should em emphasize the fact that this was built in a cabinet. The uh, that would make the other cool facts. This isn't like programmed on a computer. This was built into a cabinet. The it was built into a Hitachi black and white television, a four foot wooden cabinet, and then everything inside of there, the boards and all that stuff, were soldered into place in the cabinet to make the prototype. And all of this was built by Alan Alcorn. This man just impresses me. He continues to through the entire of all my research. Number five, when they put the prototype into a local bar to test out um, its reception, um, to, to give you an idea of how well received it was, after, after about a week or two they started getting complaints of a technical problem, so they sent Alcorn to check it out, and it turns out the coin mechanism for the quarters, yeah, it was overflowing with quarters, and that's why it was um, having issues, because they didn't anticipate that. Oops. Number six. Instead of licensing the game out, they thought they could make more money off of this by building and shipping it themselves. This led to them getting a line of credit from Wells Fargo to fund an assembly line. And in less than half a year, well, in less than a year, not half a year, in less than a year, they were shipping. Number seven. In 1974, mind you, this was released in 72 and 73. In 74, the very next year, um... They decided to create a home version of the game, um, a home console, if you will. Um, this was given the code named Darlene um, after one of their uh, one of the female employees there, and Alcorn worked with Harold Lee as well as um, oh gosh, uh, Bob Brown. Um, to they started out trying to use a similar tech to the arcade unit, and then eventually they got it down to just a chip which at the time was one of the highest performing chips in the consumer market. Number eight, the arcade unit sold over 8,000 units in 1974. And we're talking about a whole arcade unit um, in the year 1974. So the two of those make that impressive. On top of that, the home release for the game sold over 150,000 units just in the holiday season of 1975. Um, Mind you, nowadays we talk in um, millions. Back then, hundreds of thousands like that. that that's, that's amazing. That's extremely well. That, that's what we would still consider a smash hit. Number nine. 
There are several sequels and spin-offs to the Pong game with similar style of graphics, but some some changed up game elements like Pong Doubles, uh, Super Pong, uh, Pin Pong, as well as a version called Puppy Pong that was intended originally for being used in doctor's offices. It was going to be a free-to-play thing in doctor's offices to entertain kids, but later got put in Chuck E. Cheese's because Nolan Bushnell also owns Chuck E. Cheese on top of owning Atari. What? Number 10. Pong. Pong has some amazing staying power. Now, on top of the fact that we all know what it is and love it as it is, um, it has been on the Mega Drive, the PSP, PlayStation Portable, the Nintendo DS has been on PC, it has been referenced in many mediums from television to video games. It has just, it's an all, all, all around a pop culture icon when it comes to gaming. Um, just for a table tennis game using 2D graphics. Well, anyways, thank you all so much for watching this. I had a blast researching this one. Pong. Oh my gosh. Who would have known that there'd be so much to look into in Pong? Um, so, thank you all for us reach. Yeah, you know, we have reached 100 episodes. I think we're actually 101 on the playlist, as I said. Could be an error. I need to go through and check that. But, anyways, holy cow. We've come so far. This is amazing. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Seriously, why not? Um, if you have a suggestion for something I can cover down the road, please put it down in the comment sections down below. I would love to get your thoughts. Um, next week, I believe we will be doing 10 facts about YouTube or 10 facts about Twitch. I haven't decided which one, but this was suggested by the one, the only, Sav Jazz 21 and I, I don't see how the, that would be a bad thing to do. I think it would be kind of cool. Um, it's not necessarily gaming, but hey, you know what? I'm still cool with it. So anyways, until next time, you guys have fun. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.